today we are leaving the city of Hamilton and making our way to the quirky little surf town of Raglan. So today we're leaving Hamilton after spending um, quite a few days there and having um, you know some ups and some downs. You know we had a lot of fun in the city and we did a lot of fun activities, but this camper van is still a nightmare. So we will have to be back very soon. With any New Zealand road, it, it always starts off straight and then it starts to get a little more interesting. And by interesting, I mean windy as hell. On the way, we noticed there is a tourist hotspot, which is a wind farm viewing area. Um, obviously, we can see the wind farms as we're driving along, and we're kind of like, oh yeah, there's a wind farm over there. But there's a whole viewing area dedicated to viewing such wind farms. So we pack up there, and this is a letdown. It's literally facing a road with, uh, with some um, the wires like electrical wires and then behind maybe in the horizon if you have a good day you'll see a couple of wind farm um what a letdown i mean come on like new zealand your first some of the best view in the world what the hell is this one Now on the way from Hamilton to Raglan, I really recommend you check out Bridal Vale Waterfall. It's a very short hike and it's really pretty. So we're heading down, walking through this beautiful kind of like mystical forest with a beautiful path. We are stopping um, at the entrance where we are greeted by a pole that basically welcome us in this area. Tihe Maui Ora, me wehi ki te atua. Ko ia te piri piringa kaputa ka ora. Ra me ti ako tatu mo na ui faka tupu te na ra tatu katoa. We greet all of you who come from near and far to this special place. Sleep lightly and enjoy. No one's going to understand that, Robin. I think they will. I think uh, I think everybody speaks uh, the All I heard, language. All I heard was baguette, baguette, baguette. <laughs> Honestly, I have to say that um, being able to do a hike in short on the third week of winter, it's pretty epic. It's really good to be back in like a wilderness environment because we've been spending some time in the city recently, you know, sipping tea and all that. So it's good to be back in the forest and it just looks beautiful straight away. I'm kind of expecting to hear the waterfall before I see it, but somehow this is a stealthy waterfall because all of a sudden the forest just goes away, there's a drop in front of us and oh yeah, there's the waterfall beside us. The Bridal Bay waterfall is located in a small um, little enclave, so you get mountain and thick forest all around, so it makes it really isolated and if you don't know it's there, there's no way you know it's there. Even while driving, you don't hear the noise of the waterfall. Even when walking toward the waterfall in the small forest, you barely hear the noise you only hear it when you're facing it because it's just back to a massive cliff which is concave so the water is falling up here and the cliff is doing that way so you just get the noise and just push it toward the other way so it's kind of, yeah you don't know it's there if you don't look at the sign if you don't look for it actively And it's really amazing to be able to be that close of the waterfall. It looks really amazing from this first top viewing area. You, you're literally stood on the edge with the waterfall and if you're afraid of heights, then probably not a good place to stand. We're at work here. Well, 
So there's a few different viewing areas to the Bridal Veil Falls. The middle area is obviously really good because you get the whole grand scale of the waterfall, but obviously you need to go to the base. And to get down there, you need to go down 261 steps. From the midway lookout, you see the whole waterfall, the from top to bottom, and you see the water just smashing down. And then you, you also can feel the green just, you know, washing your face. And you see also the concave cliff just behind it. This is like millions of years in the making, and it's just an incredible sight, and it's so easy to go to. It is awesome. So we go down the 261 steps, and ta-da, it is unveiled. The bridal veil. Balls is unveiled um, and the base looks, you know, it looks really awesome. Massive pool, goes into small stream. So it's quite cool and, and you know, it's also a good photo up to just see the, poof, the, the water just smashing and a very, very, very small river created out of this gigantic waterfall. I mean, the waterfall is humongous and then the river is like ridiculous, but it, I don't know, I just love seeing it. And it's time to go up and this is when Laura is having a hard time. She's behind me like, <gasps> I feel I'm chased by a horde of hippopotamus out of shape. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, the roar which is behind. It overpowers the roar of the waterfall, for fuck's sake. I finally managed to hold myself up there, and I'm breathing so heavily. In conclusion, I really hope I get fit after this trip, because this was a shameful day for me. It was powerful. It was intense. I don't know if I'm going to make the last two minutes of this walk, <laughs> but I'm going to soldier on. How are your legs feeling? They feel like like heavy steel right now. Like it's not that my legs are I'm not the man of steel like Superman, but literally my legs feel as heavy as steel. We're getting back to the camper van and heading back on the road. And when we were on the road, we could have timed it better. The sun is setting and just behind the mountain in the distance, the sun is just going behind it and the sunbeams are coming from behind it and it looks epic. The Raglan Backpackers is really is all about like surfing because Raglan is all about surfing so it's a really good atmosphere. Everybody here is just like really relaxed and just ready to surf. There's like the hot pools, people are, are just relaxing in it. The showers are shaped like surfboard. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So we go in the kitchen and I'm sick of Laura's food. Uh, I've been eating like, you know, frozen pies for the last, I don't know how long. So it's time for me to make some good food. The nice homemade pizza right here. My own little homemade base. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tasting good. And, and a lot of cheese, of course. They're not as good as pies, no. Pies are awful, but pizzas are amazing. So we eat some pizza, we go and have a couple of drinks um, with some people in the hostel. So we need to now get some rest because we're going to go to an eel farm tomorrow and that might just take it out of us. 